You may be seated tonight. I just wanted to, I remember something that James Snow said to us one time. He was here preaching and he said, he said, I tell my people, think about the words you're singing and you'll get a lot more out of it and you'll be able to give the Lord a lot more from it. Amen. Well, this time Brother Thomas is going to come and uh, take a part of the service, do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Amen. Anybody have a need tonight that you need us to join you and pray about? Brother wants to pray for his family. Yes. Amen. I, I've heard that, that prayer request many times. I'm, I'm going to hear they got saved. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Anybody else have, have a request, Brother Bloom? He has a little medical problem. Okay, you have to speak up pretty loud for hearing problems too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who's preaching tonight? Brother Stephens is. They'll, they'll have a good service. Amen. Sister Jeanette? Yes, amen. Continue praying for Vanessa, Brother Swartz. Amen. And also pray for y'all's trip, too, that the Lord will make you a blessing. Amen. Brother Jeff? Amen. Amen. Sister Linda? Amen. Pray for your entire family. Okay. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Anybody else? All righty, let's stand, go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, just giving a little bit of instruction about praying. If we have somebody that's praying for us, we just join in with them and we agree with them. But... Uh, in a case like this right here, I want you to pray for the needs of those around you that gave in request that we don't miss anybody. So everybody just pray in your own way and let's take these needs to the Lord. Amen. Would you do that? Father, we're grateful tonight. Lord, what you're doing. And Lord, we just lift up these needs. I pray for Brother Swartz, God, that you would intervene in behalf of the need that he has. Brother Jacob, God, I ask you to minister in behalf of the need that he has, talking about his family and Sister Linda's family, God, I pray you would save and do a miracle, God, in that family. Pray, Lord, tonight that you'd touch and minister to Vanessa, that you'd meet the needs she has, encourage her, and God, strengthen her walk with you. Pray for Brother Robert, God, the needs that he's talking about in his life. For every person, God, that brought up a need tonight, that we don't miss anybody, but God, that your will might be done. We just pray, Lord, for the service back in uh, Phoenix. I pray for Brother Stephen and all of those, God, that will be involved in the ministry tonight, that you'd bless them. Pray you'd have your way in that service, Lord. God, I pray for Brother Bloom, that you would touch him tonight, God, that your healing might be applied to his body. Oh, yes, Lord, would you intervene in behalf of each and every need, God. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. And Lord, tonight we ask you that you'd have your way in this service. We ask God for the Spirit of God to come, the Shekinah glory from heaven, to fill this place, God, that you touch every heart, touch every life, Lord, and help each of us that we might just yield ourselves to you, that you might have your way, God, in our lives tonight, and do what you desire, God, for each of us. 
We pray for the Holy Ghost to have His way in each of our hearts and lives. And we just welcome you, Lord. Oh, Yakom da Momo Shalabakasata. We welcome your spirit, Lord, to have control. We just thank you and we love you. We want to say thank you, Lord, for all the, the people that you've touched thus far, the people you've helped. God, we thank you for every prayer you've answered, the healings, everything you've done. We thank you for it. And God, we look forward tonight for you showing yourself strong in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. I got a, a couple of announcements that I, I want to talk about here. Uh, we've got, I, I've already mentioned it before, but uh, we've got a senior fellowship on May the 6th at 1 o'clock. Uh, it's 55 year old and older. Brother Bloom will be leading the singing for us. Sister Bloom will be playing. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a great time. The only thing I'm asking you to do is to let me know if you're coming so I can buy you a chicken leg uh, that you, because I'm going to furnish the, the meat, so I need to know the number of chicken legs or chicken wings to buy. And, uh, and also, uh, uh, my wife is going to fix it. I don't know whether I've mentioned it to her or not, but she's going to be in charge of the dessert. But uh, we want you to bring uh, some vegetables and uh, bring some gravy. We need some gravy and we need some mashed potatoes. Brother Bloom normally helps us with the mashed potatoes. He, do, he cooks real good mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, but I uh, want to encourage y'all to make plans to be here. We're going to have a great time. And we're just getting this off the ground, so we want, we want, to, we want to have a good time. Uh, also, I put on my calendar, uh, I'm going to have a preacher's class on May the 11th for all of our preachers and their wives if they're married. Some of them we're trying to look for wives for them, but, uh, uh, <clears throat> but if they're married, preachers and the, preacher, and the preacher's wife, May the 11th, y'all might want to put that on your calendar at 7 p.m. And then I want to talk uh, thirdly here about voting. Did any of y'all get your ballots? Okay. Uh, I can't tell y'all how to vote. I, I, I don't even tell my wife how to vote. I just show her how I voted. And, and many times we don't know. We don't know all the details. I called, made, uh, uh, inquired about uh, this uh, it's a runoff for the mayor, and uh, the information that I got was that uh, <clears throat> this uh, Wayne Williams is by far the better candidate, and that's who I'm voting for. So I'm not telling y'all how to vote, but many, many of you have asked me how did I vote on things, and I've been faithful to just tell you how I voted. But anyway... Uh, I would, uh, I'd encourage you to be sure and vote. Uh, if, if the church will get involved and do our part in voting, then uh, we've, we have done what we're supposed to do. Amen? Uh, regardless how it turns out. But if we don't, if we don't do that, then we're neglecting. We're not, we're not uh, maintaining what God wants us to maintain. And, that's one reason our nation's in such a mess right now. If the people that claim to be Christians actually voted and voted right with conviction, our nation wouldn't be in the mess it's in. Okay, that's enough said about that. That's my testimony tonight. Uh, I want to know what you got to say about the Lord. Amen. Any, anybody want to testify? Brother Steve, you want to testify? Brother Steve was raising his hand. Stand up, Brother Steve, and testify. I saw that hand go up. <laughs> I know it was tricked, trickery.
speak up pretty loud. One else want to testify. <clears throat> Nobody's raising their hand anymore. Amen. Oh, uh, you need. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to force anybody to testify tonight. So. But uh, if you feel like that you got something you can uh, share with us and say that you love the Lord, you've you've made some improvement. Amen, Sister Jeanette. Amen. Amen, Sister Jeanette. Sister Bloom. Anybody else? Brother Bob?
<laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> well, anybody else want to testify? At this time, then we're going to come to you. Oh, well. We Amen. Brother Wells, you want to testify? I'm just praying in the door like Craig and saying, I love the Lord and I, 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 I trust and place all my trust and hope and confidence in Him. Amen. Amen. Let me say before uh, we receive the offering, <clears throat> I preached a, a message sometime back about uh, who would you let in your house? I don't know whether y'all remember it or not, but. Uh, we had uh, we had a guy that uh, he is in jail and he got on in a halfway house and he needed somewhere to go in order to make another step. So we took him in and uh, let him live in our house. And I bought a car so he'd have transportation to go back and forth to work. Uh, bought him some clothes and shoes and uh, looked after him. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, he run off with the car and everything. Uh, it was a bad deal, sort of getting it straightened out. But that was temporary because I'm not going to let him back in my house. You know, that was a temporary thing. But in thinking about God, uh, he said in my father's, Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. And if we're not so, I would have told you. And I, I thought about, just quickly about this, uh, how in the world could there be a bunch of mansions in one house? But you have to realize his house is big. Amen. Amen. Uh, talks about that, and I, I, I contend that that New Jerusalem is his house. It's 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles this way, and made up of 12 layers. That's a big house, a lot of mansions. But I, th I thought, this is a permanent thing. So really and truly, if you just think, who would you let come in your house and live there? God's not going to, it's, it's, it's not you, you come, you stay a little while. If you don't behave good, he sends you out. It's not that. It's a permanent thing. Yes. So anybody that gets in his house, it's a permanent fix because... Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and forever shall we be with the Lord. Right. So it's permanent. Uh, yes. So in, really and truly, when the preacher's preaching, or when you're reading the Bible yourself, and you're praying, and the Spirit of the Lord convicts you about anything, our church is not a church that we, we, we don't tell people that they've got to do anything. We, we, we don't tell them that they've got to do anything, make any changes or anything. But we try to help point them to where they could know how to get into the Father's house. Amen. And let that be home for them. And I'd encourage all of you, as you search your hearts just say, Lord, is there anything that would keep me out of your house? Because we got to make heaven. Amen. Amen. It's not an if or, or maybe. we got to make heaven. Amen. Now, I just encourage all of you, and pray you one for another, too. Uh, anybody that's struggling, help them by praying for them and encouraging them. Ushers are coming. I want to say thank you for... Uh, all that you've given, and uh, we're believing the Lord that uh, there'll be enough money. <clears throat> we, ought, we ought to just hold it and just give them a little bit at a time. That way we can keep them up here. <laughs> but uh, we won't do that. If they, they've got obligations. So, But uh, we want to give them a good offering, and I just encourage you, be faithful with your giving. If you made a commitment, follow through on it. <clears throat> and I know the offering will be sufficient. Amen. Amen. Brother Wells, would you pray over the offering and ask the Lord's blessings upon our people. Dear Lord, we honor and praise you, Lord, as we give this offering unto you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, this has been a blessed revival, Lord. Help us all, Lord, to ensure that what we give unto you, Lord, is 
is unselfish, is righteous, and holy. Yes, it's in your will, Lord. Now bless the, this offering. Bless every heart, every gift, every giver, Lord. Well, even bless those who don't have to give. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 you so much for giving and I said to you last night how grateful I am to be a part of a group of people that are giving people um, I believe we're going to be able to meet the needs of the evangelist and their family and um, I don't know what the situation is with brother Jacob if he's if he's uh, this guy here he's a hard worker he gets up early what time you get up brother Jacob at two in the morning and he uh, runs for about, I don't know, five or six hours, ever what it is, dumping trash. He picks up trash, works for a trash company. And in Phoenix, the reason they start at 2 in the morning, because if they started any later, it'd be, uh, it'd be too, hot to, too hot to run. But um, anyway, I looked at Brother Jacob, and I said, man, he's thin. It looks like he can't hardly sit still. And it reminded me of a guy one time, he shook my hand at the back of the church. He said, Brother Gary, he said, I just love your manly hands. He said, how do I get calluses on my hands like you got on yours? <laughs> I said, well, just follow me around a little bit. I, I can help you with that. <laughs> um, I have so many things going through my mind that I'd like to say, but I, I'm not going to take a lot of time. I just want to say I appreciate how you have been faithful to the revival, how you have responded in the altars. When we started, when we, when we started mentioning we were going to have revival and we started challenging you to begin to pray and fast and uh, seek the Lord, I don't know if you all realize this or not, but right about that time our church started to take on a little growth. And there was some new life that came here. And um, I don't want you to miss that. I want you to be able to make a correlation. Life's a lot. I tell my kids this. Life's a lot about connecting the dots. Right? It's cause and effect. And um, if you seek the Lord, he said he'd be found of you. Amen? And uh, you guys have prayed you have asked the Lord for things. Sister Bloom's testimony blessed me so much tonight, Sister Bloom. Amen. I have had a burden for your boys. And um, to see God begin to work in people's lives is what all of this is about. To work in my life. I, uh, I asked Brother Ty and Sister Sori last night, would they please pray for me? I need all of your prayers. I need to be a better preacher. I need to be a better pastor. I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better father. I need to be a better friend of my friends. I need to be a better Christian. 
And so the Bible tells us to pray one for another. We had you do that a couple of nights ago. Brother Noah, all of your messages have been spot on. What exactly what we needed. And I just want to say thank you for that. And I want to say thank you to Souls Harbor for responding to the preaching. That's all a preacher ever asked for. That's all a preacher ever asked for is that you would receive the word. You would take it and respond to it and let the Lord do a work in your life. That's all that, that a preacher longs for. And uh, I just thank you so much. I appreciate all of those of you who have cooked. And I know you ladies, that, that's, a, that's an added burden. My daughter-in-law has made desserts nightly, and they've been delicious. Thank you, Rayla, for that. Um, and for those of you who have cooked, and Sister Jeanette cooked for tonight. I asked her how she's doing. She said, I'm tired. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's when you work a job and then you have to do that, it's, it's tough. But thank you for the sacrifice. The Swartz have been so supportive in the revival. They have their own church, but they have uh, taken a night to cook and uh, have given in the offerings. They have, they have blessed the church. Amen. And I haven't said a lot about it, but I want to say I appreciate Brother Noah's boys. These young men have come, and, and I, I, you all have to forgive me, but um, one of the reasons... Brother Noah, that whenever I talked to you, I wanted to make sure your boys came was because I wanted all y'all to see. My dad always says it like this. If someone's going to tell you how to grow corn, look in their cupboard. And Brother Noah, he lives this thing. Him and Sister Carla, they're genuine people. And if I could give you one piece of advice as to how to get your kids to serve God, be real. Be honest. Amen. These young men, they love the Lord. They, they, their conversation is wholesome. I mean, they're boys. These guys, this afternoon, they went and raced goat carts. I heard, Brother Eddie, I heard you smoked them. Of course, Brother Eddie is a wild man. But they're teenagers, and they have... They have all the desires of teenagers, but they love God. And you young men, I want y'all to know I'm proud of y'all, and I thank you for the influence that you bring with you. And, uh, and Brother Jacob, you, the way you worship and the way you focus in the, in the house of God, it's commendable, and I appreciate you. And um, anyway, y'all have blessed us. That's what I'm trying to say. Y'all have blessed us. This is the last night of revival, and I didn't want it to go unsaid we honor you. And uh, I know I said last night I appreciate you for loving my parents, but I appreciate the friendship for myself as well. Brother Noah and Sister Carla, uh, they're just the kind of people that uh, you can have sweet, sweet fellowship with because uh, and all the things they've gone through, and they've gone through some things, they've not become bitter. Um, they've become better. And... Uh, I love hanging around people that love the ministry and they love the Lord and they're real. Amen. So without any further to be said, I want to just turn the service over to you guys and come and take your liberty in the Lord. And uh, let's get in. And if you've not gotten something that you needed from the Lord, hey, take out all the stops tonight. Amen. Amen. Take out all the stops. Sister Carla, what was that, what was that song you, you sung? It, I wouldn't walk, I'd run. Amen. If the Lord is, is dealing with you, don't, don't miss it tonight. Get in these altars. Give it everything you got. Amen. Cry out to the Lord and be completely here so that God might do a work in your life. Brother Noah, come and take your liberty in the Lord. I appreciate you and Sister Carla. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's just an honor. And I can't believe how quick the days have gone by. It's just uh, sometimes time can be cruel. Amen. But uh, we want to get all we can and can all we get tonight. Amen. 
the, the, the blessings of the Lord have an eternal shelf life. And uh, you, the message might not apply to you tonight, but it might in, in a week or two. And you can go back to the storehouse and bring that back out. Uh, if I get started on all the things I'm thankful for with the Thomas family and, uh, and, and this church, oh, me, I'm just grateful. We have had such a wonderful time together. And, uh, and, and just, you know, I can't wait to see what the Lord does next. Amen. We do stay in touch. And, uh, and so as, as uh, time goes by, as the weeks uh, slip past us, I can't wait to hear what the Lord's doing in your life. Amen. And uh, we're excited about it. Amen. Now, uh, each night I want to say I've noticed up here with uh, our name here, and then it says... Uh, this verse out of Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'm a firm believer in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, you know, for years, I was trying to figure out what was the theme of my, our ministry. And it seems like almost every ser sermon I've ever preached, you could boil it all the way down. And really, my point has always been, let's be faithful to God. But, you know, as the years have gone on, making sure everybody understands how important and how vital it is to be baptized in the Holy Ghost yeah. has become something so important to me. And uh, I just wanted, I wanted, I wanted to share something with you. Um, uh, we're going to have Luke testify here in just a moment. He hasn't been heard yet this week. And, and then Sister Carla's got a song. But uh, a few months ago, Brother Jacob, it, it was his turn to uh, preach our youth service. And so he had an example or a demonstration in that service. So Brother Jacob, if you'll come up here. Uh, he, he asked this question. He said, uh, he said, do you have to have the Holy Ghost in order to go to heaven? And then he gave us this example. Let's see. Um, Brother Jacob, I want to see you run as fast as you can to that back wall and then back. Hold on. Let me get my timer going here. Ready? You, that back wall back there. I mean, don't trip. Wait, 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 wait. I haven't started the timer. <laughs> All right. Ready? And go. All right. I mean, that was like 13 seconds. Wasn't that great? Wow. All right. Now, let me see you hold one foot up, and let's see you do it now. <laughs> oh, I forgot to start the timer. Come back. All right, so here's the point. You may be able to make it, but man, so much, it would be so much easier to make it all the way baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. I'm so glad the Lord wants us all to make it all the way to heaven. And he sent everything that we need in order to make it there with grace, with dignity, with praise, with, with uh, an opportunity to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Brother Luke, go ahead and testify. Sister Carla's got a song or two or three. Go ahead. 
Sometimes as a mother, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I, I so appreciate the Lord tonight and um, can't even begin to say thank you for how welcome you all have made us feel. And I was thinking today, it might be the last night of scheduled services, but it doesn't have to be the last night of revival. I believe God has begun to work even in my heart with the preaching this week that I want to continue on. I want to grow from and I want to be more for him. Um, I was thinking today, um, I heard somebody say that they think there must have been hillbillies even back in the Bible times because I was reading in Romans today where they said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Today we got to spend with Brother Gary and Sister Mary and um, Brother Gary said something that stuck out to me. He said, really a lot of times the things that upset us or the things that you know bother us the most, what's it gonna matter in a thousand years? Yeah. I am not living for this life but I'm living just to live again with my Lord in eternity. And I'm so thankful that no matter what you go through down here, if you keep your eyes on the goal, heaven will be worth it. It'll be worth it all. And I love the Lord tonight. Sometimes I feel like I'm just walking around with my head.
Thank the Lord. Amen. This, this life is just the opportunity to get ready for the next one. Amen. We're thankful for that tonight. Praise the Lord. Uh, somebody had requested this week, and I kind of, uh, I feel sorry for y'all, but <clears throat> if I can find these lyrics. I can't find them. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'd I'd try it if Sister Mary could do the thing, you know. Oh man, what? Oh, I found him. <laughs> Amen. But I just want to continue to thank you all for for everything this week. The meals have been awesome. Uh, the fellowship has been fantastic. Amen. I, I just appreciate it. I uh, appreciate Brother Caleb and Sister Rayla, all the hard work that they're doing here, back, uh, back here at the church, helping me with the graphics and the scriptures and things like that. You know, I, I'm one of those visual learners. Um, I, I need to see what you're telling me. I need to see what you're saying. Amen. And I'm thankful the Lord loves us enough and understands us enough to give us word pictures. Amen. Every time I think about his grace, I think about Abraham and Isaac. I think about how, uh, you know, that, that ram was on the way up the other side of that mountain as Abraham and his son were coming together. And, you know, I think about how uh, the Spirit of the Lord is, is uh, demonstrated in so many different ways, like water, like fire, like wind, amen, and all these things. He wants us to understand what he needs us to know. So that way we're ready to live with him for eternity, and I'm thankful for that. But uh, I, I can't remember if it was last year, but one, at one point we sang this together. And I'd love it if you help us again sing it tonight. I don't know what key, key I sing in. Uh, obviously, I try my best to leave the singing up to the singers. But uh, I, I'd like to say it's just been wonderful to get to know you all even more this week. It's been so awesome. It's our joy. It's our pleasure. And uh, I was just, you could ask Sister Carla, I was shocked when they called and asked for us to come back and have revival. Amen. And uh, I, I tell you, it's been wonderful. Okay. Amen. Hmm. Is that it? Oh, ready? I was, who's going to do the thing? Me. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Amen. If you want to know where I am going,
fiber of our being that assurance that assurance hey man is so sweet to know that you know that you know that he's heard your cry that he's forgiven you that he's written your name in the book of life and I'm so glad when this world writes us off he wrote us in amen I'm thankful for that tonight hallelujah I just uh, I want to go ahead and get to the message that the Lord will help us tonight that was your chance to take off shouting and running and going and all of that. Praise the Lord. I hope you still will. I'm glad we can worship the Lord and, amen, uh, uh, worship the Lord through listening to preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I don't want to fail to thank Sister Whitney for making our room so comfortable and so wonderful. Appreciate that so much, Sister. She wrote us a little note. If you need anything, call the number. And, and I, I told her, my boys wanted to call that number and ask if, if Brother Eddie would come over and tuck them in. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we're just so proud of uh, Brother Steve and Sister Lisa, your children. And, and uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just I, oh, hallelujah. Be nice to the Thomas family for me on my behalf, please. I mean, they're great, great people. And I'm thankful we get to go to heaven together with great, great people. Amen. All right, we're going to go to two different places in Scripture. And uh, we've got it up here, I believe, on the, uh, on the overhead. Wait, that's what they used to call them back in the 80s, up here on the PowerPoint. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to, uh, my message tonight, I want to talk to us tonight about Sparrow Dynamics. Sparrow Dynamics. First, we're going to look in Matthew chapter 10. Then we're going to look in Luke chapter 12. And really, we're going to read about the same thing, but I just wanted to show you the little difference that's recorded from these two authors on this subject. 
So let's start first in Matthew chapter 10. And it says this in verse 29. It says, Are not two, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Praise God. Verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for one farthing? So if a farthing is kind of like a dollar, that would mean that a sparrow is about 50 cents each. You get that? You see that? Any of you uh, thrift shoppers, uh, any of you segunda enjoyers get that? If two are sold for one farthing, then that must mean they're about 50 cents each, right? Or half a farthing each. All right, now let's go over and let's look into Luke chapter 12. In verse 6, this is what it says. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. And verse 7 says, But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are, uh, ye are of more value than many sparrows. All right, you see the difference here? In this portion of Scripture, it says, Are not five sold for two? I just want to talk about this sparrow dynamics here tonight for a few moments. But before we get that into that, let's pray so you could be seated. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for paying the price to make sure that we have what we need in this life. Lord, for giving us this great example. Lord, this mathematical example here tonight to help us to understand, Lord, that you have paid for this great salvation Lord, you paid for this price so that we could be saved. And then, Lord, there's other things that, that we contribute once we are saved. Lord, there's a price to be paid. There's a path to be followed. And, Lord, that cost us. But, Lord, there seems to be, Lord, a, a little bit of something that comes for free. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to see that tonight, to enjoy that, to redeem that. Lord, to allow you to work in our lives in that way. We give you the glory in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. All right, so in Matthew, it tells us two sparrows are sold for one farthing. And then it tells us here in Luke that five are sold for two. It seems to me like there's a buy two, get one free situation somewhere. You get that? Amen. Let's do the math. It says in Matthew that two are sold for one farthing. Amen. Lord, help me. In Luke, it says that five are sold for two. So I'm seeing two here and five here. Lord, uh, help us to get this math here because in the book of Matthew, if I walked up with two farthings, I should be getting four sparrows. Am I, am I way off on that? I mean, I'm not the best with math. I barely made it through high school. They, I think they passed me just to get me out of their hair, you know. Amen. And when it comes to, when it comes to you know, the math, whenever they start putting uh, letters with the numbers, that's way past me. Algebra and calculus and all that ge ge geography or geometry, whatever it is. Amen. I mean, I'm not the greatest when it comes to figuring some things out, but I see right here in these two verses, these two places, amen, that, that somehow there, it looks to me like there's a buy two, get one free situation going on right there. Amen. I wonder if sometime in the market, uh, somebody got in a, a big load of sparrows and they decided to throw some on sale. I'm not sure why it's, it's all set this way and why one book records it one way and the other the other way. But the real meat of that message comes down to this. Amen. Jesus wants us to know that we are way more valuable than these sparrows. 
He said that even the hairs on your head are numbered. And I'm so glad that the Lord knows how to keep track of us. Some, it's easier to take track of, keep track of than others. Amen. But he's not saying that he knows how many hairs are on our head. He's trying to let us know when one falls out, he can tell you which one that one was. Amen. If it was number 5,212 that fell out of your hair, out of your head, he knows exactly which one it was. And God wants us to get one point. He loves us. And nothing's ever going to happen in our life without him being right there by our side. Amen. He says, fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. So thinking of this tonight, sparrow dynamics, it's a play on words. Everybody knows that, you know, if you've got a really aerodynamic car, it's going to cut through the wind and it's going to have maybe some better gas mileage. Maybe it's going to be a little faster and all these things. If it's got good aerodynamic, amen. And we understand that these automobile makers, they try, they really strive hard uh, to, to reduce the weight. To, to gain the traction, to put a spoiler in the right place, amen, to get some downforce going. And those guys that went and raced those go-karts today, I'm sure that they were using every bit of all the aerodynamics they could to see who was the fastest to get around that track, amen. But right here, I just wanted to take a play off of that word and tell you tonight that God knows just what to do to make sure you make it all the way to heaven, amen. Even, even if it's something as small as comparing us to that that bird that sparrow amen he's wanting us to know we've got value in his sight we've got value in the eyes of the lord and he wants us to understand he's going to be there for us in every way amen isn't that great to know we serve a king who sits on a throne and he's in control of the universe nothing has ever snuck up on him and in your life he's aware of everything that's on the way or everything that's about to show up whether it be a blessing or whether it be a lesson a blessing or a lesson whatever's on the way the Lord knows all about it amen the devil had to check with him first the devil had to go and ask permission to bring you a test or a trouble, a, a, a tribulation, a temptation, or a trial. No matter what comes along, the Lord knows all about it. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus paid the price so that we could have this great salvation. It's great, isn't it? Isn't it great to be saved? Hallelujah. Amen. And he looks after all of us individually. Uh, you know, in, in, uh, in the Bible days, there was a sacrifice system set up. And some people had the ability to offer a, a, a sheep or a, a bullock. Uh, some people had to use turtle doves. But there were occasions where there might have been somebody that was so poor, that was having so much of a struggle to get a sacrifice together, that a sparrow was allowed there was other times during times of famine where families would go to the market and the only thing that they had for sale was the sparrow. I mean, that's not a whole lot of food. That's not going to feed a very big family or a very big person. Amen. Amen. But it was there, and it was not to be looked at as unclean. It was just kind of one of those scenarios where this is the best we can do. But thank the Lord we can do something. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's times where I go before the Lord, and I don't feel like I've got a whole lot to offer. I don't feel like I've got a whole lot to present to him. I've been toiling through the day trying to reach the lost, trying to, amen, to, to witness and tell people about God. And at the end of the day, I go before him and, and I've got sorrow there because I didn't see anybody saved. I didn't see anybody strengthened. I didn't see anybody, amen, make a choice to serve the Lord. So I go before him very poor in my spirit. Lord, I would have done better. I wish I could have done better. But I'm so glad he reaches out with love. He reaches out with grace, amen, and he'll give us another chance. He'll give us another opportunity. He'll open up another door. And by the time tomorrow rolls around, if there's a tomorrow, it's a whole day of new opportunities. And maybe we can go to the Lord rich at the end of that day. And we can say, I did win a soul. I did 
help somebody find you. I was instrumental in helping somebody get their name in the book. And we're going to go to heaven together. Amen. But on those poor days where I didn't get the chance, where there wasn't an opportunity, I'm so glad. His grace is still sufficient for us. Amen. Amen. Now, looking at each of these places in Scripture, I know that those with a carnal mind would like to say, that's a contradiction, preacher. Amen. When you read the Bible looking for uh, opportunities uh, to, to tear it down, you're going to find those opportunities. Amen. But if you read the Bible hoping to know Jesus in a better way, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect you in that way. You're gonna see the spirit behind the letter. You're gonna understand what God's trying to get across to us. Amen. And all of those little particulars don't really matter. We know that there were four gospels: Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are four different independent views of what Jesus was up to while he was walking this earth earth and as they recorded in their own letters amen this is how they heard it saw it this is their recollection and if there's little differences there let's get to the whole point of the message the point is this amen you are worth way more than any sparrows or all sparrows if we were to catch them all if we could corral them all if we could harness them all amen and come up with a value of them all you're worth more than all of them together amen Amen. Amen. We were created in the image and the likeness of the, of the Lord. Amen. And that's what gives us value. Uh, I remember preaching uh, during a Christmas uh, time during, in December. I preached about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Now that's pretty outside of the spectrum of the church, isn't it? But this is what I was talking about. I said, you know, the story of that reindeer is, is like this. Everybody picked on him and didn't see his value until he was needed. Then, one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, come lead the sleigh tonight. Then, all the reindeers loved him. Then, they shouted out with glee. Up until then, they just picked on him. Amen. They was just, they, amen. And so that little, sto that little song teaches our little kids that I got to do something big before people will appreciate me. I got to do something great before I'm ever recognized by others. Lie. Here's the truth. You were made in the likeness and the image of God. And that's what gives you value. That's why it's not right for us to take life because he's the only one with the right to life. Amen. Oh, man, that's not my notes, but I'm telling you here tonight, get this, get this down deep. God sees value when he sees you. Amen. Sometimes we think that we are defined by our choices in life, and we look back to mistakes. We look back to our blunders. We look back to our burdens. We look back to our problems. We look back and see what we've, we're missing or what we're lacking. But the truth is, is God sees a soul made made in his likeness, made in his image, able to carry the gospel, able to live the truth. And on top of that, he's able to baptize us in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, Jesus paid an awfully high price for us to have this salvation. And nobody else could pay it. Nobody else could carry it. Nobody else could die for someone else's sin. Nobody else could get on that cross. Amen. And the exchange that was made like Jesus could. It was a high price. We want everybody to know that salvation is free, but it's not cheap. Somebody had to pay for this, and it was Jesus. Amen. He paid a debt that I couldn't pay. I owed a debt that I, I don't know. I can't remember how that song goes, but you know it. Amen. You know, God doesn't call us by crowds or by families. He calls us by name. He calls us by individuals. And he wants to know you. He wants to understand. And you understand him. Amen. And it's all face to face. Praise God. Amen. And one of these days, we're going to finally see.
see this one who saved us, who pulled us out of the miry clay, who put our feet on solid rock. We're going to finally see him. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. A lot of people in this life are starving and striving for attention, for validation, for endorsement. They want somebody to tell them, good job, a boy, you're doing great. But when all of that is missing, thank God Jesus paid the price for us to have this great salvation. Amen? Amen. He, he, you know, in, in both of these places, it talks about us not having to live in fear, not to have to worry that, and, and wonder, does he really know where I'm at, what I'm going through? Amen. And I just made this statement that there's a lot of people who strive and starve for attention. So they'll do whatever they can in order to be noticed. Amen. They, they want to be noticed. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. And even if it's negative attention, that's better than no attention. Amen. They yearn. Every heart yearns for that attention from God. Amen. And, and, and if we can give guidance on how to know him, where to find him, and how to love him, how to receive his love, and how to believe his love. There's a lot of people that will sing that song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But that's not enough. You got to believe that he loves you, not just through a song, but in your spirit, that the love of God is really towards me, me, you, us. He loves you. He cares for you. He paid the price for you. Amen. And I'm not trying to solicit us to owe him through a guilt trip here tonight, amen? I grew up with Catholics in my family, and it's all guilt trip here. I mean, you just, you can't get one over on me. I, that's how I was raised, and I'm thankful for the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm not serving him because I feel guilty and ashamed of my past. I'm serving him because he first loved me. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get a point across here tonight that he has paid, and now there's some more paying to do. Amen. But God, he takes care of that by giving us that attention we long for. He go, he'll go ahead and get down on our level. He'll come down there where we're at. Even if it's in, in the gutters, even if it's in a mess, even if it's in a broken place, that's where God's able to do great work. Did you know that he's real good at hitting moving targets? All those that run from the Lord, maybe they've been running for 30, 40 years, but the Lord can go ahead and sling one of those love darts and hit you right between the eyes and prove again that he cares about you amen aren't you glad for that tonight amen but we've talked about this sparrow dynamics uh, in in matthew it's two for one but in luke it's five for two there's the buy one buy two get one free concept here that's what i'm trying to talk about the next thing that comes along once we get saved is now it's time for us to carry a cross he said, follow me, amen, and I'll make you fishers of men. He also said, if you won't take up your cross, then you're not fit to be called my disciple, amen. And so my cross won't fit you, and your cross won't fit me. But we all have a designed, a perfectly, specifically designed cross that's made for us. If Jesus had to carry one, who do we think we are that we're going to just slide on in with without any ever, ever having to put forth any effort in this thing. Amen. It's not always to keep our attention on him when it's time to pray. It's not always easy. I mean, here's the fact. There's some nights that I can't sleep. And uh, Lord, forgive me, but there's times where I'll get the Bible out and start reading. And before long, amen. I don't know why this flesh has such a hard time doing spiritual things. Oh, yeah, I know why. It's because we're still on this side of glory. And we're going to have to make up our minds to pay the price. 
Amen. Once in a while, the pastor will read scripture right out of the Bible, and it goes against the grain of our life. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to live it. We don't want to, we don't, just let me be willfully ignorant, because how can I be held accountable for the things that I don't know? But I want to be like Pastor Thomas and read this thing through every year. Amen. My pastor, he reads his New Testament through every month. Amen. I want to get to a place where I know what he's asking of me because I'm ready to pay it. It's not easy. It's the most expensive thing in my life. Amen. That life lived that pleases God. But you know what? I get some free stuff. He pours out some free stuff if I'm willing to live and pay that price. Amen. Amen. We have a, a, a lot of our brothers out there that have been converted by what we call easy believism. And that is that, uh, you know, that step of faith that costs nothing. Amen. That step of faith that doesn't demand anything. Amen. But let me ask you wives here tonight. How much, how long would you put up with your husband, amen, uh, only coming to visit you once a month, once a week, once in a while, and out there, amen, just living like he's single, amen, amen, uh, how much, how long would we put up with that? I know my wife wouldn't have it, amen. She'd come out there with a lasso and some, I don't know, I'm not going there here tonight, but there is a price to be paid. Are you with me on that? I mean, this is the last night of revival. I could really, really, uh, you know, say some damaging things, hurt some feelings. That's not me. I want to leave this place with an invitation to come back someday. But more than that, I want to see you in heaven. I want to see you in your mansion. Oh, John tells of a city 1,500 miles long. Amen. There's a throne in the center of that city, and it's called New Jerusalem. Amen. And in that place, the Bible says, if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also I don't know what those mansions are going to look like but I want one amen and if there's a cross to carry if that's what it's going to take to make it in then I want to carry it proudly I want to carry it humbly I want to carry it daily and I want to do it for his glory amen amen yeah, this life is a life of submission and faith and love. And we do need to be a blessing and not a burden to others. Amen. We do need to learn how to contribute to the kingdom. And I'm not just talking about your wallet. I'm not just talking about your bank account. We had this, you know, this, this preacher, his name was Cletus, in the church there in Kentucky. And anyways, he was telling, he testified one night that he was taking up an offering for missions. And this woman stands up in the back and says, if I had $10,000, I'd give it. And he said, no, you won't, because you won't give the 10 that you do have. Whew. Woo! Ouch. Amen. There's a cross to carry. There's a blessing to become. We received his, his blessing of salvation, his blessing of, oh, man, I don't have enough time to tell you how blessed we are, even when we feel like we're in, having trouble, even when it seems like things are going against us, even when it seems like every tire's got a flat and we've hit every red light in town, even when somebody doesn't like the way we're acting or, or, or whatever, even when people do insult us and trouble us and persecute us, it's worth carrying that cross because there's a price to be paid. Amen. I want my kids to go to heaven with me, so I want to pay the price. Amen. Remember, this is all about economics, sparrow dynamics. Amen. Buy two, get one free. He paid for our salvation. We are going to pay the price of sanctification. Amen. Is that a topic that you hear a lot about in this day and age? Not very many churches even know what that means anymore. But it's when we say no to self, yes to God. And sometimes there's a cost. Amen. And we're willing to pay it because this 
wonderful way is a wonderful way. Amen. I can't think of a better way. And if we had, if there was a better way, we are smart enough that we would have found it already. Amen. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching to unintelligent, illiterate folk. You, if there was a better way, you'd have found it by now. But look at us. Here we, amen, here we have found the most excellent way, and that's because Jesus is the center of this way. Amen. Oh, don't you love him tonight? Amen. There's times that we're, where he's, he's got to teach us hard lessons. Amen. But let me tell you, when I was in public school, I barely made it through. But once I, went, once I went to college and had to pay for it myself, I didn't qualify for grants. I didn't qualify for, uh, 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 what's that called, Sister Carla? Uh, what is it? Scholarships. This girl right here was the valedictorian in her high school. And she had a full ride to UK. And she chose to go to a Bible school instead. I'm telling you, that was a price that she paid. And wound up with... <laughs> oh, man. Well, <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. But anyways, amen. I, I mean, once I had to pay for the education myself, that's when I took it serious. Amen. When I had to foot the bill... When when I had to buy the book, when I had to go and sit in the class, amen, I was now taking it serious. There was a price to pay. And I knew if I would endure that hardship and that trouble and that, you know, that those days, there would come a day where I could look behind me and say, now it was an accomplishment. Now it's an accolade. Now it's a laurel that I can hang up on a wall. Look at these little alphabets behind my last name. Amen. That doesn't define me. He does amen but everything in life if it's worth doing it's worth doing right especially when it comes to this life lived for God amen are you with me hallelujah amen sometimes depends on how you receive things sometimes you receive things and it's explosive that's against the grain you know I don't want to hear that uh, uh, when I worked for the prison I had the chance to meet a couple of famous inmates. And uh, over at the ladies' prison in Arizona, there's, a, uh, there's 6,600 women in that place. And they called me up and said, uh, we need you to go down there and fill in three days a week. The other chaplain uh, got caught with a, an inmate in a relationship. Uh, I'm not telling you no more, hey man. Can you handle it? I said, yeah, I think I can. So I went to my wife and I said, how do you feel about me working with the females? Uh, some of them were ladies, the rest were females, okay, amen. Anyways, she said, well, I'm not real excited about it, but uh, you know, just, you know, do what you can, you know. And anyways, on my very first day at the ladies' prison, I'm sitting in the office trying to familiarize myself with everything. Now, remember, I worked on level four and five yards, which is, you know, people that, have, people that are in prison for killing others, and they've killed others since they've been in prison. I mean, these were hard, hard cases. They would never see freedom again. And now they send me over to the ladies' prison. I looked out on the yard. It looked just like recess. They are out there skipping, hopping, playing hopscotch, playing with jacks, playing cards, reading books. I mean, I couldn't believe how unsecure this thing was because I've been used to all that rigid. You know, if you ever see somebody just wandering around, they <laughs> call the tower, get the snipers, let's go. This is out of sort. This is not protocol. Amen. But anyways, I'm familiarizing myself with this office. I need to find all the forms I need. I need to figure it all out. I knock on the door. Anyways, hey amen. Uh, this young, blonde uh, inmate had her uniform all tied up like, you know, she says, are you the new chaplain? I said, yes, I am. How can I help you? I'm your clerk. I said, no, you're not. Get your hide back down there and find me an abuela. Send me a grandmother. If I need a clerk, I'll use somebody that's three times my age. I'm not here to get in no trouble. Amen. Anyways, you know, if you guard your weaknesses, if you guard your heart, that's from, from the heart flows the issues of life. Amen. But anyways, 
One day I'm there and I see this group of girls, five of them come walking up past my office and into this room next to mine and I'm tripping out. What is going on? What are they doing up here? Where is their, where is their uh, chaperone? I call the tower. It's the chaplain. There's a bunch of girls that just walked in this office next to mine. Can you tell me what's going on? And they said, that is Jody Arias and her entourage. She's getting mail today, and there's not enough room for that to go to her dorm. And so, yeah, about five, ten minutes later, here comes somebody with a pallet jack, and they dropped off a pallet full of mailboxes. She was doing a book signing. Uh, if you don't know who that is, don't, don't let, I don't want to be the one to tell you. But she had some uh, horrible case, you know. And, but right then I said, Lord, if you open up the door, I'd like to talk to her about her soul. I was only going to be in that spot for about six months while they hired and trained a new chaplain. At the end of that, they offered it to me, and I said, no, I'm good. It's closer to home. It was less on fuel, less wear and tear, but no, not an atmosphere for me because you're guilty until proven innocent in lots of cases like that. I'm good. Are you with me? Anyways, the day finally came. Somebody opens up the door of the chapel, and somebody's in there running laps, and I poke my head out, and it's her. I said, Arius. And so she walks up to the door. I step out under the camera. That's the only place I conducted business with any inmates was right underneath the camera. Amen. Because I'm going, I want to do my eight and then hit the gate. Amen. I want to go home at the end of the day without handcuffs. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And so I stood there and said, hey, I'm not going to be here much longer. You've not come to any services. You've not made any effort to get you know, close to God, and you're in a penitentiary. Penitence means sorrow for my actions. Change my behavior. That's what penitence is, and that's what a penitentiary is for. But I'm sorry. A lot of these prisons have just turned into body warehouses. We're just going to put them on ice until they're free to go. They're not really meant to learn anything, change any ways, or do anything different. Amen. Anyways, I, I, I just I looked her in the eye, and I said, are you concerned about your future when you meet the Lord, are you ready? And she said, Chaplain, thanks for caring, but not right now. I don't, I don't have time for religion right now. And I, I blasted off. It's not about religion. It's all about relationship. You need to know who Jesus is. It's not about reading the Bible and just following a, a list of rules. Know him because he's paid the price. Amen. Amen. And anyways, she just let me down. She said, I'm not interested. Thanks for caring, but not today. And just continued on with her little laps, you know, around that chapel. I was like, get out of here. This isn't a place for exercising unless you're exercising your faith. Amen. Anyways, that was my opportunity. It fell through my fingers. I was unsuccessful with helping her find the Lord, get right with God, and all of those sorts of things. But I was willing to put myself out there. Amen. And at least try to make the attempt amen there's a there's a cross to carry and this church has got so much potential but God doesn't reward potential he rewards actual amen there's a group of youth here that are ready to go out and amen kick in the doors amen and lasso folks for the the, the, the the sake of the cross and bring them to church they're willing to buy them pizza they're willing to do whatever it takes to get their attention and show them that love and God's going to reward you because you're paying the price amen Jesus paid a price you're willing to pay a price what are we gonna what can we expect for free you know the spirit dynamics what is it that he's gonna give us for free man where do I start hallelujah there's times where my boys leave the driveway and the devil walks up to me and says they're gonna die in a car crash you'll never see them again and you know what I do I say oh God I'm so glad that you have got a hand on their life that no matter what if I don't see him again in this life, I know that I'll see him again over there. Amen. There's times, amen, where we're, we're expecting the worst, and instead the Lord brings out the best. Amen. amen. 
just today we stopped by to, to visit uh, uh, Brother Steve at his shop. And he introduced me to a coworker there. And this coworker says, can we pray? And the, I think he's a coworker anyways. Whoever the guy was, he was a rep. Amen. Hopefully not reprobate. Amen. <laughs> anyways, that means, you know, anyways, that means good is bad and bad is good, right? They call good bad and bad. Anyways, he wanted prayer. And this is what he said. Just got the news today that my significant other does not have pancreatic cancer. Man, does not have. Hallelujah. I don't know how to, how to get this across where it suits and fits everyone. But the Lord's been doing some free things in your life for a whole long time. Count up your age, and that's how many years he's been blessing you for free. That's how long he's been pouring out goodness into your life. Oh, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid a price. Your pastor is willing to pay a price. His family has been demonstrating what it looks like to pay the price. Amen. And every saint of God can jump right in the middle of this wonderful kingdom. Amen. Pick up that cross. I, it wasn't designed to be easy. It won't fit through every door that's out there. I'm carrying this cross. It won't fit through the door at the bar. It's not going to fit through the door down there where they sell that, stu that, that smoking stuff. It's not going to fit through every door. As long as I'm walking with this cross, you can't carry it for me. Oh, but I can't carry yours either. But when we go along with Jesus paying this price, oh, man. Oh, the benefits are out of this world. He's been blessing us with so many free things. It's amazing. Uh, at the beginning of this revival, there was some that raised their hand and said, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, that's a free gift. Jesus said, and ye, being evil, know how to give good gifts. Hallelujah. How many of you, when your son will ask for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? Now, if you're from Arizona like I am, all summer long I was out there kicking rocks over looking for scorpions so I could catch them and fight them. Hey, Amen. I mean, uh, don't do that. It's dangerous. Hey, Amen. But I didn't go to my dad and ask for one. Hey, Amen. Because if I would have, he'd have told me that was dumb. Don't be doing things that are dumb. Uh, we don't want to have to visit you in the hospital or in the morgue. And we don't keep EpiPens around here. Amen. And anyways, amen. If Jesus has paid the price for your salvation and you're here tonight enjoying this tremendous liberty of being free from sin, from all oh, hallelujah. And then secondly, you are willing to walk this walk, talk this talk, live this life. If you're willing to go ahead and say no to the world and yes to Jesus you can oh man you can go ahead and come up with your arms wide open ready for whatever it is that God wants to bless you with for free amen he wants to heal you he wants to help you he wants to amen he wants to bless your home he wants to restore your wasted years he wants to come along and make sure your family is safe amen he wants to bring light where there's darkness he wants to baptize you in the holy ghost he wants to use you in the gifts of the spirit he wants to hey man he wants to amen you to be a blessing to everybody that you'll ever come in contact with Amen. Even when you're on vacation, you don't have to take a vacation from your salvation. And even, oh, help me, Lord. Amen. You know, there's a lot of folks out there that are so happy to uh, jump in your mood with you. Amen. If you got on social media right now and said, God is good, you might get a couple likes. But if you got on there and said, my back hurts, you'd get 500 likes and a bunch of compliments and a bunch of if you got on there and said you know you stubbed your toe me too same i mean misery loves company 
Amen. But oh, push, push those things out of sight. Get those things from being what you uh, credit yourself valuable with. Amen. Amen. And start realizing that it's Jesus. The fact that I made in his image and I bear his likeness. And that likeness can get stronger by the day, the closer I get to him. You want to know why I want to know his word? So I can learn more about him. Why, want, why would you want to learn more about him? So I can be more like him. Why do you want to be more like him? Because that's what he's asked us to do. Amen. And we can do it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's 2023. I know it seems like the church has lost its focus, its power. Amen. It seems like, but that's a lie. He said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. I believe we're in those last days. I believe that we need to go ahead and start receiving those free gifts that God has for us. Amen. Because he wants to bless us as we're on the way out. Amen. Here tonight, as Sister Carla comes to the piano, and she comes to bail me out of this message, I hope it made sense to somebody. Amen. I hope that it really, really did. Amen. Get down into the heart of the matter. Oh, my word. I got two more pages I forgot about here. Oh. Let me see if there's anything I really need to say. Amen. 1 Timothy 1, verse 20. I should have sent this to you, uh, uh, bro. Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. There's times that we fall short. And sometimes the Lord gives us a little bit more leash so that we can get out there and experience what we are hungry for. But I'm so glad that he'll pull and keep that pressure on. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's just like when the disciples were out there fishing and there was somebody on the shore that said, children, have you any meat? And they said, no, we fished all night long. No avail. And he said, well, cast your line on the other side or on the right side. Which side is the right side? Whichever side he says, that's the right side. Amen. I believe as soon as they felt the pressure on that line, they knew who that was. Amen. As soon as they felt that pull, I'm so thankful that part of this free gift is that, that conviction that comes as we hear and as we read his word. It deals with us at the root and at the heart of the matter. And all we got to do is say yes. 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 God takes care of us by making us have, or he takes care of us by helping us to put more value on the things that bless the soul more so than the body. Amen. A lot of people make fun of the sanctified life. It seems so out of touch. It seems so removed from reality. But no, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm an, amb I'm, I'm an ambassador of, of Christ. Amen. And so I want to represent my king. I'm not so worried about what everybody else says. I already read the book of Ephesians. And if nobody else approves of me, I know that I'm accepted in the beloved. As long as I can get his smile in my life, really, does anything else matter? No. Sparrow Dynamics is this. It's, it's buy two, get one free. He paid for my salvation. I'm willing to pay the price of carrying a cross. It's uncomfortable and sometimes heavy. Sometimes I lose, uh, you know, the, the, the chance to do what I think I want to do. Instead, I got to do what he wants me to do. But you know what? If I'm willing, oh, the free gift of heaven, the free gift of the Holy Ghost, the free gift of discernment. <clears throat> Man, every, everything that God promises us is all for free. But there has been a price that's been paid. Are you willing? Are you willing to recognize the price he paid and recognize the price that's before us? Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord, tonight. Oh, let me look here real quick. 
sometimes I call my wife up too early and she just lets me know later if you're really not ready for me then wait a minute this is what it says he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it amen amen in time and in inter- in eternity our losses are always going to become gains in heaven sparrow the poorest of all birds used in the offerings when those that needed to make an offering were too poor to buy a dove or a lamb or a bull they couldn't afford it in the winter they would try to fatten up the sparrows some families that's all they could afford to eat amen just one by itself hardly enough for a child to make a meal off of but matthew says amen amen that uh that that there's two for one luke says five for two and when we do the math there somebody is giving us a freebie somewhere amen and here tonight in this revival we've come to the end of our scheduled services but everything god wants to continue to do in your life is still going to be available amen Whenever Friday night service rolls around or Sunday morning service rolls around, the child of God that's been paying the price can walk in with an expectation that God is going to meet me here. I got, I got needs, I got troubles, I got issues, and I know that I can count on Him. I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that He's able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. I know I'm full of assurance all because I know he's paid his part I'm trying daily when I stumble I ask him to help me amen when I fail I ask him to forgive me I don't have to start over at square one at ground zero I just pick myself up amen amen rejoice not against me oh my adversary though I may stumble up to seven times I will arise and I'm gonna get back up and pick up my cross and I'm gonna keep on marching with my king amen and then in those days in those moments of need I can go to him with full assurance he is going to be there to help me let's stand tonight amen so tonight is your opportunity to come on